you probably know the buzz wire game. You have to take the loop from one end of the wire to the other end without touching the wire. If you touch the wire, a buzzer sounds and you have to start all over. That's going to be our next project. Let's understand this project's uh, electrical circuit. We have a battery and a switch. The battery is connected uh, to a buzzer. The buzzer is connected to a, a wire, which can be bent or straight, it doesn't really matter. But the electric circuit isn't closed, it's not connected directly to the negative side of the battery. Um, in order for the circuit to be closed, it takes for the metal loop to touch the wire, and only then will the electrical circuit uh, be closed and the buzzer would sound. I tried to illustrate in this um, drawing which parts of the system would be uh, hidden within a box and which would be exposed to the user. As you can see, the battery, switch and buzzer are all inside the, inside the box. The only parts that the user would be able to see are the bent wire and the loop that's connected using a flexible uh, wire um, to the negative side of the battery. So what do we need for this project? We need our battery, our uh, power uh, delivery board and the breadboard. We need the buzzer and uh, note the buzzer has a uh, positive and a negative side, we'll talk about that later. We need uh, three wires, preferably uh, black and red, two alligator wires, a metal loop. We need a flexible wire, I'm using a wire that's uh, often used for uh, different arts and crafts, which is very flexible. We need a box, a tape, and two screws. So let's build our simple electrical circuit and as always we'll start with our power delivery board we'll connect the battery we'll connect the positive uh, line of the breadboard to row number 14 and then insert the, the buzzer note that the buzzer has uh, two, uh, two legs the long one is the positive side and they will connect the positive side to row number 14 We we'll connect the other side of the buzzer, row number 17, to another wire and connect this wire to one of our uh, alligator clip wires. We will then connect the other alligator to our flexible wire. As you can see, we've connected two screws to the two ends of the flexible wire. We'll take the metal loop and insert it through the other side of the flexible wire and we'll connect another alligator clip and wire to that loop. Notice that one end of the flexible wire remains unconnected. We'll take the other end of the alligator wire and connect it to another connection wire and insert it into the negative line of the breadboard. Now before inserting everything into the box, let's check that our circuit is complete, starting with a battery, going through the buzzer, through the flexible wire, and through the hook and back to the negative side of the battery, we have a full serial circuit. Let's check that everything is working. Okay. Let's integrate our system into the box. We'll take the two screws and two ends of the flexible wire and we'll use a screwdriver to drive them into the box. We'll do it on both sides and we will then give the flexible wire its shape. Don't worry, uh, you could always change this shape if it proves to be too easy or too hard.
let's look inside the box. We can see our two screws. These will be our connection points for the electronic system inside the box to the outside flexible wire. We locate the system on the bottom of the box. We'll slide one of the alligator lines outside the box. This is the line that's going to connect to our metal loop and the other alligator wire will connect to one end of the flexible wire to one of the screws. Actually, it doesn't really matter which ones you choose. We'll close the box and we'll connect the alligator wire to the metal loop. One thing that still left to do is to create two regions, uh, two isolated region, regions at the two ends of the flexible wire and we'll do that using our tape. We'll cut a, a small cut through the tape and we'll wrap it around the wire. We'll also wrap the wire itself at, the, at its two ends so the loop can stay there without activating the circuit. We can now test our system and see if everything works as we intended.